Good morning. Thank you, Patty. That was, that was beautiful. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church of Oroville. I'm Betty Ledford, your liturgist for today. If you're visiting for the first time, we welcome you. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If you are returning guests, we thank you for coming back. Our prayer is that you'll continue to come and be a part of our family. For the rest of you who have made First United Methodist Church your home church, thank you for your faithful attendance. No matter who you are, you are welcome in our church. All are invited to join us in the social hall after worship for a time of fellowship and snacks. The social hall is located straight through the double doors. Are there any announcements to share with the congregation? I would like to share with the congregation that um, my husband, who is not a member of this church, but contributes time and energy to projects for this church, tried to have uh, people meet him to clean up a lot of rubbish in the back of the past pastor's uh, parsonage. And no one showed up except me and my sister, who's visiting from Idaho. Linda, will you stand up, please? This is my sister, Linda, visiting from Idaho. And her, her, not my sister, but H-E-R-R, -R, her, showed up. And we put a lot of, we filled the dumpsters here at the, park, at the uh, church with ho so many bags of rubbish. Um, it was, uh, the bags were heavy, heavy, heavy. And um, I just, I just don't understand why people won't get together and, and tackle these projects. I mean, it, it was a good example when people came to paint the parsonage, and I think that was terrific. We need more participation like that. Thank you. And on another note, uh, yesterday we were here uh, decorating and greening the church, and um, it was a great time. We had fun. Uh, Gail was here with her little Claire, mm -hmm. and Janet was here, and um, let's see here, Carol, where Carol Anderson was here, and Psalm and his whole family were here, and Micah. It was, you know, it was good. It was small, but uh, we managed to get everything done thanks to Psalm. None of us are willing to get up on the uh, ladders anymore. Psalm was, was the man of the day. I mean, he and Micah were just so great, Thank, thankfully for, for them. We appreciate that. And everything looks beautiful. And we get to put the Christmas on the tree today, so that's a wonderful thing. So, so, you know, there's another side also. So thank you very much, everybody who came yesterday. Um, and we, I have the uh, January and February uh, social and greeter uh, sign out there. If anybody would like to sign up, we're fine for this month except for the 15th, I think it is. Uh, we don't have anybody signed up for the social hour for that. But that's just the potluck, so it's not a whole big deal. It's just getting coffee and stuff ready, so um, it's not a hard one to do. So I'm hoping that people will get the pen in their hand and fill it out. And oh, I think, Psalm, did you put that on YouTube yesterday? Yes! Uh, <laughs> Raiden saw it and said, well, and I said, well, Jeremy wasn't there, but Psalm was taking pictures. So if you want to see yesterday's happening, it's on, it's on YouTube. So thank you very much, Psalm. That was great. Are there any other announcements? Please check the back of your bulletin for some upcoming events. Well, actually, today is we're celebrating December birthdays, and um, it's also Controcation Sunday, which will be talked about a little bit later. And um, December 15th is the Christmas Children's Program Potluck and Christmas Basket Drawing After Church. Oh, 
it's now time for our opening prayer. It, this is not in the bulletin, so there, oops, can you hear me okay? Am I on now? Yes. All right. Okay. So there's, I am talking. <laughs> there's a few changes to the bulletin today, so I've added an opening prayer, um, Davi and Donovan will be lighting the Advent candles today, and the choir will be singing Still, Still, Still. Okay, I think I have them all. So um, you may remain seated, but please uh, bow me in prayer, or bow with me in prayer, please. Oops, I gotta find it. I'm bad. Uh oh. I lost it. Sorry. Um, God of our expectation, we praise you for coming days when you will execute shalom, love, peace, health, and well-being for the people who walk in darkness. We await with assurance the coming days when cancer is cured, when every gun is beaten into tools for rebuilding, when every child develops God-given gifts, and when every adult sees every child as a gift from God. We desire, O God of our hope, coming days when no city fears hurricanes, no country fears bombs, when no person fears another, because God chose to create all people in diversity of God's image. We thank you for our hope and for our coming days. Amen. We will now have the lighting of the Advent candle. Um, the, there's the pull out in your bulletin to, and there's a congregation piece that we'll be joining along. From deep in the past, Jeremiah calls to us. The days are surely coming, says the Lord. When I fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah, beloved, the days are surely coming when the yearning of the land and, and the long, longing of the sun, moon, and stars, the desperate need of people of earth for flourishing and peace will receive, will receive their fulfillment. Wow, fear, anxiety. We light this candle of hope as a sign of our commitment to pay attention and prepare for the days that are surely coming and are already here. The days when God's kingdom of love, justice, and mercy will reign. It's time now for the passing of the peace. Uh, please share the peace of Jesus Christ with your neighbor. Peace be with you.
Okay. Uh, it's now time to add the uh, Christmas to the tree, so you get to stand up again. <laughs> If everybody would like to come help decorate the tree with the Christmas, children especially, of all ages. They're all laid out on the table for you.
If you are able, please stand for the call to worship. Children of God, pay attention. The days are coming when God's peace will reign and all creation will flourish under the reign of our Creator. Children of God, prepare your hearts. The days are coming and are already here when God will come near and show us how to recognize God's reign among us. Children of God, be alert and listen. God has one near to build the kingdom on the earth here and now. Will you join in? We are already here. We come to prepare our hearts to pay attention, to listen and to follow God's call, to build the kingdom of earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And now it's time for the opening hymn, A Maid Engaged to Joseph, in your uh, hymnals, number 215, and also on the screens.
prayer. Holy God, we confess that we are busy with many preparations. We are busy with parties, with feasts, with giving. We are busy cleaning the house and wrapping presents. We are busy with the stuff of the holiday, and we confess that our busyness may be misplaced that we spend more time preparing for things than preparing for you. Remind us that our hearts and souls have work to do, too. Enable us to let go of that which does not matter and to see what does matter. Thus we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's now time for the special music by the choir. It's time for our joys and concerns. Does anybody have some joys and concerns they would like to share?
I'm a little concerned. My, my brother um, came through the surgery for his appendix, first appendix, the uh, night before last, but he's maybe having a little infection problem, and he, since he has an ongoing chronic leukemia, the, the management of that's a little, a little bit difficult. So I'd like prayers for my brother Steve in his recovery. I forgot to mention the Christmas board out in front, but it actually is kind of a joy uh, also because you will have the opportunity to take one of the, or two or three or four of the little stickers off of the big board out there right in the narthex as you come in to um, bring back to the church so that we can give the, all of the things on there to three different families for Christmas. It's something we've been doing for years. Uh, this is not a group from our state preschool, but, but these are three families that April knew, so we know that they're, they're needy. And so please, as you go out into the fellowship hall, take a couple of the little strips and um, bring the things back to them. And if you would put the little um, piece of paper on your gift, that would be great. You don't need to wrap the gift, just bring them without wrapping so that the parents know what they're getting and can wrap them themselves. So thank you very much. Thank you, Alma. While Taylor's coming around, I will let you guys know that I heard from Pastor Shine, who is Pastor Yu's brother. Um, Pastor Shine has had some improvement. He was able to eat, I mean Pastor Yu, thank you, Jolene, um, was able to eat some basic rice, is what the text message said, and some green mustard, and scrambled eggs and tomatoes. Um, he was also able to move one of his, he didn't specify, one of his foot feet, he was able to move about an inch or so. So that's really good progress for, for him. Um, so that would be our joy. The concern we now have is for the lack of appropriate care that is being provided by the medical community to Pastor Yu and Michelle. So we will be, my sister and I, and Pastor Shine will be working on that this week. But I would ask for prayers for those medical staff to do their job appropriately and timely, and also for the patients of us as we deal with this difficult situation. Thank you. My friend's mother is doing much better. Um, she's home and she tested negative for COVID. And what Thank was you. her name, Keith? Melba. Melba, thank you. So we need to do that. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. And Lord, in your mercy. And I would also like to extend prayers for Patty and for Doug, who have been very ill this past week. Patty was able to make it today. Um, Doug, not so much. Um, so definitely prayers for them for healing and to hopefully not have to deal this, with this again for a while. Yes. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Prayer. Thank you. Any other joys and concerns? All right, let us take a moment in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, bless our loved ones we have mentioned here today. Carol's brother Steve, Pastor Yu and Michelle, Keith's uh, friend's mother Melba, and also that we um, help support the families that April has chosen for the, uh, on the giving board in the back of the church. Please help us find the time and energy to take care of these needs in our congregation. Heal the people in our lives that need healing. Surround them with mercy and grace as only you can do. Protect those needing protection, especially those that have not been mentioned here today. We ask all of this in your, in your son Jesus' name, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand if you're able for our center hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, um, hymn number 211. seated. We're going to be doing uh, for the consecration Sunday now. If you would just join me in prayer, please. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, please bless these pledges and offerings that we pr give to you today. Guide us in using them in a way that serves you, in a way that helps us grow as a congregation, as a family, as a supporter of our community. Amen. So if you have your consecration, your envelope, or your pledge with you, we have an offering dish up front if you'd like to bring it up front, um, or you can put it into the offering plate as they come around. It's your choice. But if, it's your, um, if you're going to put it in the offering plate, please put like a little note on there so they know what it's for. Thank you. You can just play a little, a little bit. Just play something. Whatever. <laughs> Thank you. 
It is time now for the scripture reading, and the scripture reading today is from uh, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. It's 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming and sharing the first Sunday of Advent with us. Um, and again, thank you to everybody that was here yesterday um, helping decorate. It looks great. It looks really nice. Um, so in working on the sermon for Advent Sunday, I actually reached out to, we have a, a website, I don't know if you've seen it, First United Methodist. It's a discipli uh, discipleship website. It's fabulous. So if you ever have the call within your heart to provide a sermon or a message to the church, it's a great place to get information and resources. So while I was doing that, I gave it a lot of thought about what Advent means to myself, my family, to everyone. And what I realized is that this season can still surprise us. We may have been checking the calendar, we may have made plans and had them underway, for some months now, and still, when the first Sunday of Advent rolls around, uh, we're shocked. It can't possibly time for Advent already. I'm not ready for it, we say to ourselves. But let's be honest, it isn't simply a matter of calendar neglect. It is that this season of contemplation comes amid life in all its saturation and its messiness. We are wrapped up in so many things, getting so many things done, so many things right, that we are surprised when the very thing we are planning for is here. This first Sunday of Advent, let us pay attention to the prep preposition, it's of, not in. Advent is not something we endure. It is something we become, something that we are. We are people who live in anticipation, who live in hope. It is the essence of our being. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we are he heeding the call to pay attention. In, <clears throat> excuse me. Our life is a life of fullness and joy, but it is also preparation for even more completeness. In Wesleyan tradition, we call that completeness sanctification. Or, even riskier, we say we are moving on to perfection. We prepare for eternity, for perfection, by living attentively. We might be surprised by the arrival of this season, but we are also deeply startled by our continuing need to be reminded to look up, to get ready, to get ready for what is to be. Some years ago, my family was juggling so many things that the preparation of Advent got pushed down the list. We were caring for my mother after the passing of my dad. I had recently been promoted at work and was trying to adjust to all of my new responsibilities, and we were welcoming our first grandchild into our family. It was a lot to do, a lot to think about, and some things were just missed. One drizzly Saturday afternoon, while trying to nap in my bedroom, I heard someone shouting my name through the house. Now, I don't know about you, but when someone can't wait for you to get up from a nap to shout for you, it is some sort of crisis. Maybe a good thing, probably not. So I sighed to myself and debated whether to respond to this summons. I debated quickly, though since the source of the shout implied that if I knew what was good for me, I would attend to their call. Yes, I shouted back, trying not to sound too irritated. Did you read your email last Tuesday? 
asked my daughter. In the holiday haze of selecting gifts, turkey shopping, and the never-ending work drama, who remembers clear back to Tuesday? I must have read it sometime during the day, I thought. I, I was at work all day. Uh, yeah, I said somewhat hesitantly. Well, came the voice, do you realize that your sister-in-law is coming for dinner? <gasps> no, I exclaimed. No, don't get me wrong, I love my sister-in-law, and we were glad she was coming, honestly. Okay, she's a bit unique. But still, it is always fun to have her with us, especially with our kids and our new grandchild. It was the surprise that caught us off guard. She had told us specifically that she could not make it for Christmas this year because she was too busy. So we were planning on missing her that year, but now we wouldn't, which was a good thing. It just meant rearranging things a bit, like finding a bed for her to sleep in, a chair for her to sit on, and working out a bathroom schedule, and meals. Let's not even go there. But all in all, it was a good thing. Even good things, though, bring about changes or adjustments. Even things we long for sometimes don't fit into the life we've made. Because we've been living without. Making room is not always easy. This is why the first Sunday of Advent readings may sound so scary to, you, to us. We are reminded that the world as we know it is not the last word. While our hearts long for wholeness, especially for those broken in this life, while our hearts long for peace, especially for those who have only known war, while our hearts long for fullness and healing, especially for those who are hungry and hurting, if all those were to come about, they would unsettle us for quite some time. In Luke 21, 25 to 26, Jesus tells us of the days yet to come. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth there is distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I am not sure how you will receive this sort of thing on the first Sunday of Advent. I believe that most people are expecting to hear the preliminaries of the Christmas story, perhaps an angel announcement, maybe a song of transformation, a dream, a journey, or a royal decree. But certainly not people fainting with fear and foreboding. Personally, I'm not sure if I'm up for foreboding. There are movies about the end of day that are impressive with their special effects, and we go to them to see them for entertainment. So if Jesus is trying to scare us into being ready, he needs to start doing a better job of it. However, when we take a second look at Luke 21, 25 to 26, the verses imply something different. Maybe it isn't fear that Jesus is trying to instill. Perhaps it is something altogether different. Maybe it is the opposite. And what is the opposite of fear but hope? Stand up and raise your heads, Jesus says to us. Our instinct when things go badly or when the moment is difficult is to keep our heads down. But Jesus tells us to raise our heads, to look up, to trust, to have confidence, and to pay attention. Oh, that's a tricky one, any time of the year. But with all the distractions of the holidays, it is even more difficult. Pay attention, Jesus says, but to what? To the end of time, no thank you. The people who are all wrapped up in that type of thinking seem a little odd, a little bit out of touch, and frankly, they seem to have all their priorities mixed up. If their message is taking care of oneself over others, they, <clears throat> so staying clean so that you come out well in the end, well then, I am not really interested. Pay attention, Jesus says. Advent is a multi-layered time. There is the remembrance and the desire to recapture the birth of that baby again. We really want to hear that angel song and believe that if even for a moment, peace on earth is within the realm of possibility. We look back to what has been done for us. 
But at the same time, the scriptures remind us that there is still a coming on our horizon. We look for the coming of the kingdom, when the lion shall lie down with the lamb, when we will beat our swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks, when we will wage war no more. There is a someday out there towards which we lean and for which we hope. And Advent does just that, if, lo if it looks forward as well as it looks. Pay attention, Jesus says. What if there is one more layer, one more direction, in addition to back and forward? What if there is an around? Well then, we need to look around to find it. We need to look up, we need to look down, or just look. And we need to be on guard so that our hearts aren't weighed down, so that we don't miss it, so that we don't miss him. That is, this is the amazing thing about Advent season. There are glimpses of the kingdom that appear when you least expect it. There are sightings of the Savior in the twinkling of eyes, in the hesitant thank you, and the gasps of wonder. In the late night conversations, scattered family members trying to figure out what might be next. There are prayers of hope and love, an embrace of peace that brings you to tears. If we could just pay attention. Jeremiah says it simply in chapter 33, verse 14. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise that I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days, the prophet writes in verse 15 that God will execute justice and righteousness in the land. That would be a wonderful surprise wouldn't it? Justice, righteousness, almost incomprehensible, almost too much to believe, to hold on to, to what seems beyond our grasp, and to prepare to live as though it was the very way we were going to encounter every day. This is why the prophets will be our guiding image for this Advent season. The prophets lived in preparation. They saw what it was. They heard what could be what should be, and they lived that constriction. They were Advent people before we were. As for us, we live in a prophetic existence today. We live as witnesses to what could be, what is coming, surely coming. That is our hope, our preparation. And it is wise for us to remember that the day is surely coming. Like unexpected family, like unexpected hope, like justice and righteousness, and it will be to all of us joy, an everlasting, perfect, and loving joy. Thank you. It's now time for our offering. Thank you. 
All earth is waiting. Heavenly Father, bless us as we go to our respective homes, watch over us, and lead us on a path to you. Beloved, go from this place, blessed with a hope that takes root and grows, preparing us to notice, to listen, and to join in with God's kingdom work among us. Amen. <laughs>